Your classic British car likely came with one of two very different looking starter solenoids. Why did they use two and why did they convert from one later on to the other? To understand that, we need to understand that they use two very different types of starter motors. This type of starter solenoid right here was usually mated with an inertia starter, like the one that you see right here. Now, the solenoid operates quite simply. We've got an input stud, we've got an output stud, and then we've got a small stud over here that goes to a switch in the cockpit. When you flip the switch in the cockpit or turn the key, power would go to this, an electromagnet inside would come to life and bring contacts together, letting power flow from this one to this one, and from here we'll go to the starter motor. And this is the starter motor, the power goes in here. Now, a person with a lot of American car experience might look at this and say, I don't understand why is the pinion gear past the flywheel, it's always on this side of the flywheel. And this system, no. Here's how this works. As power goes in, this motor begins to spin. The drive right here, the pinion drive, is on a screw gear, and if she doesn't quite make as many RPMs per second as the motor does, she moves outward like that to make contact with the flywheel. When you let go of the starter motor and it reverses itself, she comes back and parks. So the pinion gear lives on the far side of the flywheel. This system has a tremendous advantage and a tremendous disadvantage. The advantage is simple. When the starter solenoid sends power to this starter motor, this starter motor comes quickly up to full operational power, and this comes right along a moment behind. That means that this motor is at full power, full torque, full RPM when she hits the flywheel. The advantage is that all that energy all ready to roll hits and gets this to move quickly, and that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to turn the starter, or turn the motor, so she's going to come to life. The negative part of this is that if this is at full operation, when she hits right there, we have a spinning gear that's going to hit a gear that's not moving at all. That's a violent event. This was brutal on these teeth, on these pinion gears. It was brutal on the teeth on the flywheel gears. The industry needed something that was going to do a better job of not harming things. So this starter was replaced with what's referred to as a pre-engaged starter. And I have a sample of one of those right here. The pre-engaged starter solenoid is mounted right here. You can see it's sitting right on top there like that. And the starter solenoid at this end looks the same. We've got an input stud, we've got an output stud, and we've got a small terminal going up to the cockpit. Inside we're going to have an electromagnet which is going to pull over and pull these contacts together and send power to the motor. The other end is what's different. This has this long assembly on here which also gets pulled in with the electromagnet. You can see it happening there. Why does it do that? Well, inside this starter motor assembly, is a lever. It sits right about like this and it pivots on this pin right here and when I pull the lever like this two things happen. First, as the starter solenoid comes together she pulls so she's going to pull this end of the lever in. When this end lever gets pulled in this end of the lever gets kicked out and what it does is it pushes this pinion gear out. In other words she goes and engages the flywheel. Now going back to this for a moment, we've got travel here before we actually get to the point where the contacts close. That means that this is actually going to have that gear out to the flywheel before the starter motor gets power. This is important. This is why it's called a pre-engaged starter. This starter motor will be engaged with the flywheel before the starter motor actually gets electricity and starts to spin. So we have a gear that's not spinning, making contact. That violent event is gone. Now this has the negative and the advantages like everything else does. The positive is obvious, okay? We've eliminated the violent bang, and that's a good thing. The negative is that, well, starter motors need a lot of electricity just to come to life. There's a lot of inertia to overcome. So this, when it comes to life, is going to have to come over its own inertia, and it's going to have to try to turn the engine at the exact same moment. It requires a lot of electricity. This motor is capable of doing that. She's got plenty of power to be able to turn herself and the engine and start the engine for you. The negative is that it requires a lot of electricity, again, as we've mentioned. That means that your battery has to be in good shape. Your battery terminals have to be nice and clean and tight. Your cables have to be in good shape. The ends of your cables have to be in good shape. The ground strap from your frame to your motor has to be in good shape. And if all those things are in place, this runs beautifully. If any of them are not up to spuff, then this isn't going to function the way you want it to and she's going to fail. Now, one more thing. We've talked about the inertia starter. We've talked about the pre-engaged starter. And these were, were in our cars when they were classic and they were new. Some of these newer cars or these classic cars have a newer starter motor assembly. And this is it. This is referred to by some people as a gear reduction starter. Some people call it a high torque starter. And the system is this way. If you're thinking about it, you're driving your little car along and you need more power to get up and go someplace, you downshift. 
In other words, your motor begins to spin fast, that gives you the power that you need to go where you need to go quickly. That's how this operates. This is a small motor. It's only half the size of its contemporaries. But notice that she, instead of having a shaft coming out the end right here and going to the flywheel, it disappears in here. There's a gear reduction assembly in here and comes out that way. In other words, this is a geared down starter. It's like shifting down in your transmission. That allows the starter motor to spin fast. This is a high revving engine or high revving motor and she's going to develop more torque to turn the flywheel. So, Originally, we would have had an initial an inertia starter with this type of solenoid. Later on, we went to a pre-engaged starter with a solenoid like this. And lastly, this is another form of pre-engaged starter, but it uses gear reduction to give us more torque and it'll do a better job of turning the engine.